India's big win on the international stage has come after a decade of hectic lobbying and negotiations with uh, several countries, especially China, to get the United Nations Security Council to brand Masood Azhar as a global terrorist. Uh, we're speaking today, in a sense, to the man of the match, the person at the center of this uh, hectic negotiations in the recent past. That's uh, Syed Akbaruddin, India's permanent representative to the United Nations, uh, joining us from New York. Uh, Mr. Akbaruddin, uh, welcome and thank you for speaking with Bloomberg Quint. Um, let's begin by understanding how this whole process happened now in in march uh, china uh, you know sort of put a spanner in the works once again for the fourth time if i'm not mistaken uh, what changed uh, in the last few weeks and how did we get to this point um, so tamanna thank you very much for providing me this opportunity to interact through you through your to your viewers um, you'll have to understand that um, uh, diplomacy uh, is the art of negotiation and negotiation presupposes give and take and therefore um, it's the art of consultation is the art of working together uh, towards a common objective uh, as diplomats um, uh, we work with our colleagues from various countries uh, in this case all members of the security council um, uh, and uh, the effort was to indicate to them and to convince to all the members of the Security Council that what they are doing is acting in concert against an individual rather than uh, and an individual who has a track record of uh, being involved in unsavory activities against states, especially India. Uh, that was the uh, our target and we are grateful for the many, many countries who worked with us in support of uh, getting that uh, done, especially those who worked as designators of this effort, that is the US, the UK uh, and France, as well as the chairperson of the 1267 committee, the ambassador of Indonesia, who at crucial stages was able to uh, use deaf diplomacy to achieve uh, the, a consensual outcome in the committee. So you, you spoke about diplomacy being the art of uh, give and take. What, would, what did we give? Uh, and, I, and I asked this uh, question in a specific context because, um, you know, there have been news reports that the original draft talked about Pulwama and uh, Masood Azhar and Jaish's uh, terrorist activities in Kashmir that was not there in the final draft. Uh, was that something we had to let go? So I don't know uh, from where uh, you are getting that information, but let me put it another way. I suggest uh, you have a look what triggered all this discussion. It was the attack in Pulwama on 14th February. Also, within a week, that is on the 21st of February, the United Nations Security Council issued a standalone statement on Pulwama. I suggest all of you read it. It's a statement which acknowledges that the attack took place against paramilitary forces from India. It was in Pulwama. Uh, the Jaish had claimed uh, uh, responsibility for that attack and that the perpetrators of this crime should be brought to justice. Uh, it's a first of its kind as far as India is concerned in terms of a statement from the UN Security Council on a issue uh, relating to Jammu and Kashmir on a issue relating to our troops and attacks on them. So I have already, uh, that issue stands settled on January 21st, um, uh, sorry, February 21st. Um, the listing only began after that. So why are we trying to relitigate things that have already been established, it's available, it's on the record, and we've declared victory on that uh, several months ago. So my, uh, my point is, let's not mix the two. Pulwama was the trigger for this effort, but the effort precedes Pulwama. So therefore, the effort has to fit into the framework of that history. But Pulwama was the catalyst which ensured that the effort succeeded.
But then why is, uh, you know, the activities, terror activities of this group in Kashmir not mentioned? And I ask this again, uh, from this being pitched as sort of a face saver for Pakistan, uh, who has already always taken the position that they have nothing to do with terror activities in, in Kashmir, uh, that they're indigenous. Uh, does this provide Pakistan some sort of a face saver and China, uh, which, you know, always wants to protect its iron brother, does it um, provide China some kind of face saver? So again, I suggest you please have a look at that, pull that down, show it to all your viewers and um, uh, uh, let me know uh, if what I have said is incorrect. If that is a standalone uh, decision, already a statement which has come out, which China has also agreed to. As a member of the Security Council, China negotiated on that outcome and agreed to it. So I think... Um, you have to see all these in a contextual framework rather than insist that every outcome should uh, have uh, issues of your choice listed. That matter stands settled in February. Let me ask you if you have already uh, won a victory in, um, uh, uh, in diplomatic terms previously, why will you again bring that to the table? Uh, because negotiations presuppose bargaining. So I will not bring what I have already pocketed back to the table. Okay. Uh, give us a sense of what happened behind the scenes. Uh, because we've seen uh, a ton of statements after this uh, from Mike Pompeo as well. Uh, you know, congratulating the United States for this diplomatic vic victory. Uh, we're learning that France uh, played a role, uh, UK played a role. Uh, so where did the big push uh, come from and was India's role more behind the scenes getting allies to push China? How did it all work? Sure, we are not members of the Security Council therefore we depend on our friends in the Security Council to actively associate and push this uh, agenda um, uh, by definition we are not saying that we were active as members um, yes, we are grateful and I started uh, that, uh, our discussion by acknowledging the designating states. They played key roles. Um, uh, all other members of the Security Council worked towards consensus. Uh, and I mean all. The outcome is a uh, situation where diplomacy, given space, has triumphed. Um, it's not about a single country or about a, a group of countries. It shows that given space, uh, diplomats can work consensually and come out with decisions which are for the benefit of all. Sir, so you uh, have been a career diplomat, uh, which is why I'm asking you this question. Do you think the credit of what we have seen now, uh, you know, the listing of uh, Masood Azhar as a global terrorist by the UNSC, do you think that credit goes to this government's foreign policy specifically, and I ask uh, it from the context that we're sitting in the middle of an election. I know you hate that question, but I must ask it. Uh, we're in the middle of an election uh, where national security is a big issue. This has already become an issue, uh, a big political issue over here. Do you think any one government, and specifically this government, uh, deserves, if not all, but most of the credit for what we have achieved here? Uh, you will appreciate that as um, uh, government servants, I will not tread into um, uh, in an arena which I am not familiar with. So um, you can ask uh, and my response will be, I am not taking that clickbait. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Akpuruddin. I had to ask. But uh, thank you uh, for responding to all of our other questions and congratulations once again for the big role that you have played. Uh, that was Sayyid Akpuruddin speaking to us from uh, New York.